Hey everyone, this is just another experiment in video recording that I thought I would put up. Um, I have a new microphone and I wanted to see how the audio quality worked, and I thought I would take it as an opportunity to play around with the format a bit and rant about something that it's basically impossible to rant about in written form, which is reading out loud. Um, I sort of started noticing this a while ago because a lot of public speakers, uh, particularly ones who are kind of nervous about what they're doing, uh, don't look at the microphone, um, end up uh, reading out loud from a written form of their talk. And this is reliably terrible. Um, it's, it's It doesn't have to be terrible. I, th I think it's, it's almost always going to be better to not do this, but there's going to be some circumstances in which it's fine. But the reason why it's reliably terrible is that people haven't actually learned the skill of reading out loud. And people here includes me, I'm not particularly good at it. Um, I think the only people who are good at it are poets and parents. Um, but it's, it's relatively easy to see how to be bad at it, and it's relatively easy to sort of do some basic prep work and sort of figure out like how to improve, a li improve at it a little bit to the point where at least it doesn't uh, it isn't physically painful for me to listen to you doing it, which is how I often feel. Um, as you saw earlier, I picked up a book uh, to just demonstrate what I mean. Uh, this is Into the Looking Glass Wood by Manguel. I may not be pronouncing his name. I'm, I'm right. Um, it's a nice book. It's not my f not one of my favorites, but it has the property that it looks very book-like, and so it looks um, good for doing this. Um, let me show you what I mean by sort of painful reading out loud. Uh, this is from his chapter, uh, Browsing in the Rag and Bone Shop. Uh, and it starts like this. One Saturday afternoon, some time ago, a friend dropped by to see me and said I looked horribly sick. I told her I felt horribly sick. As far as I could remember, I had only felt like this once before, after seeing a dog hit a car. My friend asked me what had happened. I told her that I had just finished reading Brett Easton Ellis's book, American Psycho. Um, and it's a bit of a parody. It's um, I, I have genuinely uh, heard people reading out loud like that. Um, generally people who are either academics giving a talk by just like literally reading out their paper please please don't do that um or people who are just are doing a reading in church or something and just haven't really acquired haven't really done much public speaking before or haven't really done anything like this um and the problem with what i was doing there is that i was speaking entirely in a monotone um and this doesn't reflect how people actually speak. It reflects it's because when you're speaking naturally, there's a certain level of pauses, of variation, of emphasis, and a lot of that is signaled in the text, and a lot of that you'd have to figure out for yourself. But it's none of it is coming through in how you're speaking, and it makes it really hard to follow, and it makes it really hard to engage with what's being said at any sort of emotional level because you're essentially having to puzzle it out yourself without. Um, the cues you would normally get from reading. Um, so let's try this again. Uh, one Saturday afternoon, some time ago, a friend dropped by to see me and said I looked horribly sick. I told her I felt horribly sick. As far as I could remember, I had only felt like this once before, after seeing a dog hit by a car. My friend asked me what had happened. I told her that I just finished re reading Brett Easton Ellis's book, American Psycho. And that's not a lot better because, uh, like I said, I'm not all that good at reading out loud. And also there isn't necessarily that much um, to do with this. But you can hear a bit more the punctuation and the sentence breaks. There are a few places where um, the text is italicized. For example, um, I told her I felt horribly sick. Um, the a word felt there is ita italicized in the text and the emphasis comes through a bit more in the speaking and this is really something that like, like I say, I'm not particularly good at it either but I think it's important to if you're going to be doing any sort of reading out loud uh, pay a bit more attention to the cadence and the 
um, tone of what you're saying. Uh, and you can't see the book. So that's fine. No, that doesn't work. Um, I am just going to put this up first draft, by the way. So uh, all of the incompetency is for you to see. Um, let's just try reading out that a little bit more before I go. Um, which is. So it continues. The circumstances leading to this book's publication are well known. Ellis had published two novels, of which, the, which one at least, less than zero, became a sizable bestseller. The American publisher, Simon & Schuster, bought American Psycho for an advance of $300,000, typeset it, and at the 11th hour, due some say to protests within the company by several of his editors, decided not to publish it. It was immediately picked up by uh, Sonny Meta of the Random House Group of, of Publishers, and the Random House group of publishers, and included in the prestigious Vintage Contemporaries, a series that boasts, among many others, writers of the stature of uh, Don DeLillo and Richard Ford. The, natural, the National Organization of Women in America threatened to boycott all of Random House's books, except those by feminist authors. As a prank, Spy Magazine sent out sections of American Psycho to porn magazines such as Hustler and Penthouse, all of whom turned it down on the grounds that the scenes depicted were too violent. Canada Customs tried to prevent the book from crossing the border. Fortunately, they were unsuccessful. I would march in the streets for Ellis's right to have this book on the market. I would also march in the streets for my right to argue against his liter literary pretensions. Um, that's enough for now. Uh, but there were a couple of things you might have noticed in me reading it aloud. Like there were a few bits that I had to repeat because I had got the emphasis wrong. Um, like the um, when I said what was it? Uh, yeah, so I said Random House Group of Publishers, and what I really meant was Random House Group of Publishers, and. So often when trying to translate the uh, written form to the spoken form, you end up needing to read the whole sentence before you quite know where you're going with, the, with that. And when reading something aloud for the first time like this, like I just repeat myself, it's, it's a thing that is going to be probably much more obvious in video than it is in live. People don't really notice this if you're doing it um, in person because it just feels sort of like a natural clarification. Um, and this is also like why it's this is less of a big deal when you're reading out something you've written but uh the but it's often worth like doing a couple of run-throughs from the spoken for from the written version first uh before you bother not before you bother before you try to actually do this in front of a live audience because it helps a lot in terms of getting this kind of thing right um that's pretty much all I had to say. This has just been your small, a mini rant about reading out loud. Um, thanks for listening, everyone.